Hi, welcome to Hubble's Universe Unfiltered. I'm Dr. Frank Summers of the Space Telescope Science Institute. Today, we're going to talk about discovering planets. Now, in our solar system, we've known about planets for a long time. Matter of fact, this is our solar system with Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and on out to Jupiter. These planets, plus Saturn, are planets that you can see without the aid of a telescope. We call them the naked eye planets. And so these planets weren't ever really discovered. We did, however, discover other planets in our solar system, and we didn't discover the first one until 1781. In 1781, William Herschel was looking at double stars in the sky. He was doing a study about double stars, and he was looking at the constellation Taurus, and we've recreated it here. And in looking at Taurus, he saw this fuzzy star here that didn't appear on his star charts. So he wondered, what is it? So he looked a few days later, and he found that that star was gone and had actually moved to a different position. And so, by seeing it on one day here and on another day here, seeing it move against the background stars, he could deduce that this must be a solar system object, simply because solar system objects move quickly across the sky, and stars, well, they're relatively stationary. He was able to then announce to his astronomer friends that he had discovered a comet. Now, wait a minute, we're discovering planets in this show, aren't we? Well, no one had ever discovered a planet before. So Herschel wasn't going to say, oh, I've discovered a planet. What he would expect to discover would, of course, be a comet. However, upon observing this object, they found that it didn't move the way a comet would. It wasn't in the in inner part of the solar system where it would be moving much faster across the sky. Instead, when they followed its orbit, they deduced that its orbit was twice the distance of Saturn from the Sun. This is an object way, way out in the solar system, and to be seen this bright, it was so soon concluded that it was a planet. We now know it of it today as the planet Uranus. Now, Uranus plays a major role in the discovery of the next planet in our solar system because astronomers look, went and looked back and found that other people had seen Uranus over a hundred years earlier. And from that, they could compute a very accurate orbit. Well, Uranus didn't follow that orbit. Uranus kept straying ahead of its predictions and behind its predictions. And these predictions are based upon all the gravity we knew about in the solar system, the gravity of the sun, the gravity of all the other planets but Uranus wasn't staying, going where it's supposed to. So, two mathematicians, John Couch Adams in England and Urbain Le Verrier in France, took up the question to figure out what was causing these perturbations in Uranus's orbit. And they concluded that there had to be yet another planet out beyond Uranus. And when astronomers looked for it, they found the planet Neptune. Neptune was actually predicted by mathematics due to the theory of gravity before it was ever observed. This was an amazing feat of science. So that's how we filled out our solar system, going all the way out to the, from the inner planets onto through the outer planets. But we're really not talking about our solar system in this episode. What we're really going to focus on is discovering planets in other solar systems. You may know that we know of over 300 planets around other stars, and some of them form planetary systems. For example, this is the planetary system around the star 55 Cancri, which basically meant it was the 55, 55th brightest star in the constellation Cancer. The outer planet in 55 Cancri has an orbit that's about the same size as Jupiter's orbit. The next in planet has an orbit about the same size as Venus, and then there are three more planets way down in here next to the star that all have orbits smaller than Mercury's orbits. These planets range from Neptune-sized planets all the way up to some one planet that is four times the mass of Jupiter. So although some of the orbits are sort of like our solar system, the distribution of planets, putting a Jupiter-sized planet in Mercury-sized orbits, isn't really like our solar system. Now, these planets have not actually been seen. I can say, give you the parameters of it, but these planets haven't been directly observed. We have only know about these planets due to their gravitational effects. Just like Neptune caused an effect on Uranus, 
these planets cause an effect on their star. A large planet, as it orbits around its star, pulls on that star, and that star sort of wobbles a little bit. And that little bit of wobble by the star can be detected in spectroscopy. So we have deduced the existence of these five planets due to that little tiny wobbles that they induce in their star.